see us on this side so today and we are dealing with a topic called as mitochondrial inheritance okay so let's get started basically the mitochondrial inheritance is also called as cytoplasmic inheritance as well it is also called as cytoplasmic inheritance as well okay deal with now so here the mitochondrial dna is the dna located in the mitochondria as obvious the name is suggesting the mitochondrial dna is the dna which is located in the mitochondria okay deal with and basically whenever we are dealing with the eukaryotic cell the eukaryotic cell that convert the chemical energy from food into a form that cell can use and that form is called as adenosine triphosphate or rather we call it as atp so please do remember one thing that the atp is always synthesized from the mitochondria okay now the mitochondrial dna is only a small portion of the dna the mitochondrial dna is only a small portion of the dna in the eukaryotic cell and most of the dna can be found in the cell nucleus and in the plant and the algae in the plant and the algae it is also found in the plastids such as the chloroplast so at the end of the day if i'll be asking you how many organelles are there which have their own dna so the first thing will be it is none other than the nucleus correct it is a nucleus first then we'll be dealing with that chloroplast also contains their own dna or rather i'll be calling that is as genome and the last but not the least one it is the mitochondria which also carries its own dna okay so do remember all these three cases nucleus chloroplast and the mitochondria all these three organelles have their own genome now the human mitochondrial dna was the first significant part of the human genome the human mitochondrial dna was the first significant part of the human genome to be sequenced and this sequencing has revealed that how many base pairs are present in the mitochondrial dna so there are 16569 base pairs present in the mitochondrial dna which are coding for 13 proteins which are coding for 13 proteins if you are preparing for a competitive exam please do remember that you have to deal with these types of questions okay now here since the animal dna evolves faster than the nuclear genetic markers the animal the animal mitochondrial dna evolves faster than the nuclear dna so ultimately it will be representing a mainstay of phylogenetics and evolutionary biology okay deal with so the mitochondrial dna has played a very important role in the studies of the phylogenetics and the study of the evolutionary biology okay how come the new organism or how come the new species is formed from the previous one it also permits an examination of the relatedness of population yes we can i'll i'll be explaining that and so has become important in the anthropology and the biogeography now what does this anthropology and the biogeography means so basically it is the study of the human behavior is the anthropology or rather like i'll be dealing with the human culture and the biogeography is the like the uh, the number of the individual species living at the particular area with respect to time so if i'll be asking you like how come you will be dealing with the mitochondrial dna so you can check the dna of the siblings you can check the dna of the siblings and they'll be showing only 50% similarity okay only 50% similarity if you are dealing with the nuclear dna but if you are dealing with the mitochondrial dna if you are dealing with the mitochondrial dna please do remember one thing that the complete mitochondrial dna will be matched why because only only mother is the one who is transmitting their mitochondrial dna to the next generation and not the father in the normal cases now we are dealing with the other than the normal cases so here the exceptions so in most multicellular organism in most multicellular organism the mitochondrial dna is inherited from the mother correct that is what i said you just like just i have told you that the mitochondrial dna is inherited from the mother and will be calling it as a maternally inherited and mechanism mechanism of this uh, this inheritance will be simple dilution because the egg contains 200000 mitochondrial dna a normal egg contains 200000 mitochondrial dna molecules whereas a healthy human sperm contains only 5 mitochondrial dna molecules so if the egg is having 200000 dna and the sperm is having only 5 so ultimately we it is obvious case that we will be dealing with that it is the mitochondria it is a, it is a maternal dna 
which will be transmitted from the mitochondria so here one extra thing that the degradation of the sperm mitochondrial dna the degradation of the sperm mitochondrial dna even in the male genital tract and even in the fertilized egg that is what we call it zygote so whenever like the the sperm is getting traveled from the male genital tract the mitochondrial dna is getting degenerated there as well and even it has managed to enter in the fertilized egg there will it will be degenerated as well degraded as well and in a few organism in a few organism the failure of the sperm mitochondrial dna into the egg the egg will not allow to enter the sperm mitochondrial dna at all so wherever the egg mechanism to this single parent that is what we call as a uniparental inheritance or i'll be calling it in other words it will be maternal inheritance this pattern of the mitochondrial dna is found the maternal inheritance is wholly solely de de uh, de uh, dependent on the mitochondrial dna or rather we we call it as the cytoplasmic inheritance as well and this is found in majority of the animals plants and also in the fungi okay now there are some exceptional cases as well here there are some exceptional cases in which the human babies are sometimes having the mitochondrial dna the human babies are sometimes having the mitochondrial dna and like this mitochondrial dna will be both from their father as well and from their mother as well and this time this time a new condition will be developed that condition will be called as mitochondrial dna heteroplasmy okay deal with now as i have told you earlier about the female inheritance it is the mother only who is transmitting their mitochondria to the next generation specifically in the case of the sexual reproduction the mitochondria are normally inherited exclusively from the mother that is why like there is a joke like uh, which goes around in the field of the biology that uh, whenever like uh, you are you are saying this that mom you have given me something which dad can never be and that was none other than the mitochondria it's a mitochondria which always we get from the mother rather each and every other organelles as well we are getting from the mother itself now the mitochondria is the mammalian sperm uh, i'm sorry the mitochondria in the mammalian sperm are usually destroyed by the egg cell after fertilization also majority of the mitochondria are present at the base of the sperm tail and if they are present at the base of the sperm tail which is just used for propelling the sperm which is just used for propelling the sperm so ultimately the tail is majority of the time the tail is lost during the fertilization in the year 1999 it was reported that the paternal sperm mitochondria are marked with ubiquitin are marked with ubiquitin ubiquitin and selected them for the for the later destruction in the, inside the embryo selected them for the later destruction in the embryo and here in vitro fertilization technique particularly in injecting a sperm into the oocyte may interfere with this so here the fact that the mitochondrial dna is maternally inherited it's maternally inherited it's enabling the genealogical researchers to trace the maternal lineage for back in time basically like in the same case we are dealing with the y chromosome dna the y chromosome dna which is paternally specifically inherited is used in a analogous way to determine the paternal lineage history so basically like there are some complicated words like some mitochondrial dna by sequencing the hyper variable control that is hvr1 or hvr2 hyper variable control region okay and sometimes the complete molecule of the mitochondrial dna sometimes the complete molecule of the mitochondrial dna okay for example like the hvr1 has 440 base pairs the hvr1 has 440 base pairs and these all are compared to the same region of the other individual to determine the maternal lineage this is for the siblings and majority of the time the comparison is made with the revised cambridge reference so ultimately like i won't be going for the detail of that but still i'll be saying what they are asked, what they have published in their paper that the matrilineal descent of the domestic dogs the matrilineal descent of the domestic dogs from the wolves from the wolves the concept of the mitochondrial eve is based on the same type of the analysis as well which is attempting to discover the origin of humanity 
by tracking the lineage back in the time now something about the mitochondrial dna so here the mitochondrial dna is highly conserved and it is relatively slow mutation rate so ultimately like compared to other dna region such as the microsatellite such as the microsatellite which is making it useful for studying the evolutionary biology okay and phylogeny as well phylogeny which means like the relationship of the organism phylogeny is the relationship of the organism based on the evolutionary studies so here the biologist can determine and then compare the mitochondrial dna sequence among the different species so ultimately if you have like the mitochondrial dna we can literally go for the comparison between the species and the species and using this comparison to build an evolutionary tree using this comparison to build an evolutionary tree for the species which we have examined till so far so however the due to the slow mutation rate due to the slow mutation rate it is often hard to distinguish between the closely related species to any large degree so there is a disadvantage as well like the closely related species will be having exact same mitochondrial dna and we won't be able to distinguish between them now the mode of inheritance of the mitochondrial dna so here if you will be checking it out this is a maternal inheritance this is nothing but the egg this is the human egg cell okay deal with so what like what what is written here it is a egg cell and this is none other than the sperm cell okay here like you are having in the neck region you are having the mitochondria where in the head you are having the nuclear dna this is the nuclear dna okay deal with the case now what's happening here just like the fusion of the male and the female gamete and fertilization is occurring all the mitochondria are contributed by the oocyte because these are the mitochondria deal with the case so here we are having the egg we have like the fertilized zygote rather i should be calling it as fertilized cell will be called as zygote and here like i can go through that both the sperm and the egg both the sperm and the egg contributed the nuclear dna to the zygote but only the egg has contributed only the egg has contributed the mitochondria and the and like uh, mitochondrial dna to the zygote but there are some cases in which there are some cases in which the mitochondria the the mitochondria has given the the sperm has given the mitochondria the paternal transmission of the mitochondria was reported in skeletal muscle in a in a patient with a mitochondrial myopathy so ultimately if i will be asking you what is the meaning of myopathy so what i will be telling you that myopathy is a general term which refers to any disease that affect the muscle that control the voluntary movement in the body so basically what happened in the patient whenever the like the maternal and the paternal both the mitochondria has been entered in the muscle cell the the subject will be suffering from the myopathy and what is myopathy it is the term which refers the disease which affect the muscle that control the voluntary movement okay so and why the myopathy has been caused due to a dysfunction of the muscle fiber due to a dysfunction of the muscle fiber okay done so this was all about the cytoplasmic inheritance or rather i'll be calling it as mitochondrial inheritance or the extra chromosomal inheritance whatever it may be hopefully this lecture has been beneficial for you guys thank you thank you very much for your so much support thank you